Well, hello there, chaps and chabbits. Welcome to another board games that everybody should. Dot, dot, dot. Um, a board game series where I show you how games are played and tell you how they feel and then leave it to you to decide what you're going to do with it. In this video, we're going to look at the game Ice and the Sky, which is based on a documentary of the same name. Well, actually, it's based on a French documentary, which is called Glace et le Ciel. Um, and the documentary, documentary follows the life of Claude Loyus, who was the first scientist to discover that the polar ice caps were melting in this global warming phenomena way back in the, the late 50s. That's 1950s, not 2050. But anywho, so this game is about um, polar ice caps mounting and global warming yes <laughs> it's a small card game where players are going to be playing cooperatively together to try and keep the equilibrium of the earth equal yeah <laughs> so without further ado let me show you how to set this little thing up let me show you how the game plays let me then tell you how the game feels then tell you whether it's my cup of tea or not before letting you decide whether this is something that should be sat on your shelf. thing you'll do is you'll set up the playing area which is made up of these six cards you have your sky earth and water and then you have west north and east and these are easily to be placed out due to the fact that on the back of the cards it is marked where they go in the setup you also have three starting cards which go into this grid and again on the back it tells you where they go to make set up very very simple so you have your sky your earth and your water next to that you're going to need to place your ice scoring cards and your sky scoring cards these are made up of a small deck and these will give you your points at the end of the game the game will be played over three rounds and there are three generation decks of cards here each deck is made out of 12 cards and each of these 12 cards has four water, four earth and four sky. And they have a value of 0, 1, 2 and 3. Some of these cards have carbon dioxide on them, which is a bad thing in the game. And some of them have this methane symbol in the bottom, which is used for an advanced level. And as the game progresses, there'll be more carbon dioxide and more methane for you to try and get rid of. But they all contain the same cards. And the last cards that I need to talk about are these target cards. You have the identification targets and the biosphere targets. The identification targets consist of the north, east and west, the earth, water and sky. Whereas these biosphere targets have different values on them. In each game, every player will take one of each card and they won't know what it is, but it will give them a target that they have to aim for. So in this case, Earth has to have a value of six, whereas another player might have a different target of water must be four. And the last thing you need to do is you're gonna need to choose a starting player. That player then takes the first generation cards and then shuffles them and deals them out to each player. With all the first generation cards dealt out to all the players, you then pick up your hand of cards in front of you and you look at them and you go, ooh, they're nice cards. Now you have to be careful because each player will also receive one of the identification and one of the biosphere target cards. But the thing is, that player is not allowed to look at them. Each player has to put these cards in their hand the other way round so everyone else can see what their target is. Now let me show you 
how to complete a target. So an example of that would be west, like that, has a value of three, and water, like that, has a value of five. But then again, you might be playing a three player game, which means that someone else might have a different value. So a third player might have east six, which means that this line has to equal six. And now you're ready to begin playing. One important rule while playing is players are not allowed to communicate with each other, apart from to say someone has achieved their target or someone has lost their target. Remember those two cards? That's players' targets. So starting with the first player, that player will take one of their generation cards and place it into an empty space on the grid. And then play will pass to the left. Yeah. And then that player will then play one of their generation cards into a space on the grid. Once all of the spaces on the grid have been filled up, that is the only time that you can place a card on top of another card, changing the value. Now, as I said, the only way that you can communicate is to say that someone has reached their target or if a target has been broken. So if at any time you see a value of another player, so in my case, West 3, if that ever equals West 3, which it doesn't do, but now it does, I can say someone has reached their target. And so players have to deduce between themselves, was that me? Oh no, it's them over there. So that's one target succeeded. Now, depending on the number of players will depend on the number of targets there are. So if there's four players, there will be four targets to you, for you to reach. Once everyone has played with their generation cards, that's when you'll do the first round scoring. And that is done like this. With the first round done, players will reveal their targets. So here we have West 3. We check to see if West 3 was a success. We have West, we have 2 plus 0 plus 1, which is 3. So that was a success. We have Water, which is 5, which is there, sorry. Water is 2 plus 3, which is 5. We have East, which is 6. There's East, but we have 3 plus 3 plus 2, which is 8. So that's a failure. And then we have Sky, which is 5. And as you can see, one, two, and two equals five. So we had three successes and one failure. How do we score that? Well, we do the successes minus the failures. So three minus one equals two. And then we use these scorecards for the sky, like so. We place the new zero at the two. So we are in positive two at the moment, but the scores can go negative later on in the game. You may find that you might be a minus one on the next round, which means that your score is one. And then maybe on the round after you go negative one, which means that your score is zero. The other thing you have to do is you have to check for CO2. If there is a card that's visible with CO2 on it, you will have to remove one of the ice cards. These ice cards are multipliers of the sky cards. So if two, times two, your score will be four so far. But if at any stage you get to zero, any multiplication of zero is zero and you lose the game. So the first player passes the first player card to the player on the left. They then take the second generation deck of cards, shuffle them, deal them out. They also take all the target cards, shuffle them and deal two out to each player. So you have a new objective. You will do this up until phase three, generation three, and then you will count up your scores. And what you're trying to do is get the highest score possible. But as I said, if you get zero on the ice at any time, the game is a failure. Um, the higher the score, the better you are. And then that gives you a goal to go for the next time you play. Try and beat that score. So, to sum up Ice in the Sky, it is a board game that every Howard Wolowitz will enjoy as much as they enjoy throwing snowballs. Yes, this game is a nice light to medium weight 
brain burner of a cooperative game. It's a card game, so I'm gonna start by talking about the cards and the art and everything. The components, it is small, it's, it's you know portable, you can take it anywhere. It's just a nice small card game with some nice cards, very poker style cards. Um, one of the problems I have with the art is the, the, the disconnect between the two different art styles. Obviously you have this filmy art style there, and then you have this cartoony art style on the cards. And on the back of the cards it's uh, another art style altogether. So you have like three different art styles in the game. Uh, but it doesn't really disconnect from the game too much, it's just one of those little things. Again with the artwork, there's some weird things like this. This lighthouse generates CO2, but this big city doesn't generate CO2. It's, um, yeah, it's strange. Um, the fact that they got these lovely um, designs on the back of the cards, which makes setup and tidying away the game so much easier. Look, that's level three. That's phase three, that's generation three. It's easy to sort out. This goes there, you know, is a great addition makes the game quick to set up, quick to play, and what else could you ask for? The rule book is a nice chunky size, but that's because it's in five different languages. It explains the rules really nice. It has these very nice pictorial images of where everything goes, how everything works, and there's enough examples in here to keep the game flowing and keep it easy. It is quite an easy game to teach and to learn how to play. Obviously the difficulties come with holding the hand of cards and having your, your two objectives facing away from you. Sometimes there are those occasions where someone will pick up the cards accidentally and look at them and you'll just have to reshuffle and do those um, redeal those objectives. It's nothing major, but it happens from time to time and it's one of those things. There are some variants in the game uh, to make the game even harder. To make the game harder, you add on the methane symbols, which are on some of the cards, and they count as the CO2. So for each one of those, the ice will melt. Um, you can make the game easier for younger children as well by um, removing the CO2. So CO2 has no effect in the game whatsoever. You can make it even easier for younger, younger children, and that's just by putting your cards out in front of you so you work cooperatively with each other and you can say, oh, why don't you play that card on that card? I don't know, it might work. I haven't tried it, but um, yeah. Also in the rule book is this table of your final scores. So it tells you how well you've done because it, it, with different player counts, you're gonna have a different higher score because of the multiplication. Um, so with a two player game, the highest score is an 18, whereas with a four player game, the highest score is 36. That's a kind of little kind of motivator to get you to replay the game, to try and beat your last score, especially if you're playing in couples or you're playing with a group of friends who like these type of games. Um, I find that interesting and obviously the expert mode to make it harder so once you have got that perfect victory, go for gold. Let's talk about the gameplay. The gameplay is relatively simple, you just play in a card onto a grid, but the complexity comes with the non-communication, the hidden information and this mathematical kind of Sudoku-like puzzle you're trying to get the result to equal uh, the targets and that is part of the fun and the charm of this game, unlike in Hanabi. Um, the game gives you plenty of chances as well to, to calculate because you're allowed to look through what cards have been played. And the nice thing about the cards is they tell you what generation they're from. So you can look through and go, okay, there's a three and a one from the third generation, which means that there's a zero and a two that still haven't been played and that person's got earth. So I need to get somehow, yeah. And so you can work it all out. Um, a fault of the game is that you can fall into this routine. It does become routine to play your CO2 cards first because then you can cover them over with the other cards in the game. Um, so you, you probably won't stumble onto that strategy at first, but after you, on your second game and afterwards, you'll, you'll just do that. And any new players, you'll tell them to do that. You'll say, okay, right, if you've got any CO2 cards, play them first. Um, so the game can become a bit repetitive because it is a case of, well, just 
throw out all the CO2 cards. But again, on the second generation and third generation, it becomes a, a, a bit more thinky because where are you gonna throw it? What are you gonna cover over? Are you gonna give new information? Because again, the targets change for each player from each generation. And so the mathematical puzzle explodes. The game plays pretty quickly. You are looking, you can knock a game, a two player game out in 10 minutes and you can knock a four player game out in 20 minutes, maybe even shorter. The differences between a two player game and a four player game are with a two player game, there's only two objectives. So trying to figure out what your objective is, is kind of simple because you can see what the other person's objective is and you can go, okay, they've got water. So which of the other five is mine? And as soon as they they confirm, they put a card in a place, you then got to think, okay, am I east or am I earth? Because they've just said that a target's been completed. They've just put a card there. It matches east and earth. <gasps> what is it? But if they put a card on water and they're water and they say you've reached the target, you know it's east. With a four player game, it becomes a little bit more easy to determine what your target is but at the same time it is really hard because there's a lot of crossover because there's four players you might have three players which do the, the northeast and west and one player that does earth or you might have earth and wind against west and east and so like every card is important you put a card in a place and it changes the result so a target might be lost and a target may be gained so <laughs> there's this whole kind of really really what we're we going to do here the game works really well really enjoyed this game but is it my cup of tea well you know what i actually prefer this game to hanabi but it's not particularly my cup of tea it is a a nice solid game where the theme actually comes through unlike hanabi and there is enough calculating in this game to make your brain go ooh, and the, the interaction between the other players with the communication is fun unlike in Hanabi there's no communication it's just a case of what is played and the little clues whereas the clues in this are more limited but there is there's still a lot of thinking to do in this game it's not replayable enough for me it's not going to be a go-to game for me but as I said if you said let's play this game i will come and play with you no problems because i enjoy playing with different people it's, there may be some of you which are you know you have your playing partner and you may play two player games or your playing group which you'll play four players and you'll play the game constantly to try and beat your score it's okay for a while but for me it's just so it's kind of my cup of tea but not really my cup of tea um another little bugbear which i forgot to mention earlier is the scoring cards. It's a nice idea, but it does make calculating your final score a little bit awkward because you've got to put the zero there and then if you score two, you put it there and then this card goes here if you score one in the next round and then your last round if you got minus one. And then you look down it and you start, that's the zero, so where is the final score? Could have been easier, could have been easier. It's nice, it's thematic as well to do with maybe the, the the thermometer even a thermometer that'd be a good idea so you start at zero degrees and then you go up i don't know but then again having a high temperature on a thermometer would mean the ice would melt <sighs> maybe some icebergs some iceberg tokens one two three that's your points there you go i don't know but uh anywho that's ice in the sky and I hope that this video has pointed you in the direction of whether this is a game for you or not. So I'll say thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, please like or share this video with your friends. Um, you can always go to boardgameseverybodyshould.com um, and see what other videos I've done. You can also check me out on Facebook and get like a preview of what game is coming, what review I'm going to do next. Um, on Facebook, Board Games Everybody Should. And if you like what you see here and you wanna help support what I do and help finance and maintenance my, my, my equipment, then you can go to Patreon and throw a few pennies my way. Board Games Everybody Should again. Yes, there's no dot, dot, dot on that, I'm afraid. But anywho, thank you very much for watching. And remember that you don't have to own every board game out there. You just need to own those really good ones. And hopefully I've pointed you in the right direction, whether this is a good one for you or not. 
And until next time, I'll say ciao for now and play nice with each other. Just sitting at the table next to Felicia would be quite nice. Wouldn't it be good? I got some board games.